such a sexy voice. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's 16th century exploration of dance. I Today, we're going to be focusing on the Pavan and the Galliard, its cousin or perhaps younger sibling, if you want to go by the idea that slower dances are for older people and faster dances are for younger people. So the Pavan is a slow and stately dance, and it is described as being used for processing. And so I thought I would put us in the mood for this dance by reading to you from our great French uh, canon, church canon, slash um, priest. Juano Abo is his pseudonym, but his actual name is um, Mr. Jean Dupré, I think. Um, oh, excuse, excuse me, uh, Jean Taboureau. This is his actual name, and Juan Abo is an anagram of that. So this book, for those who've not been in this class before now, this book is a fantastic uh, guide to many things about, oh, come on, really, focus camera. Orchothography, oh, it's not mirroring it, that's nice. Is a fantastic guide into a mid 16th century sort of middle-class dancing. And this is an elderly gentleman reflecting back on the joys of his youth, of course, and about how decadent all dances have now become. It is set up in the form of a dialogue uh, between the master and the student. And the student is named Capriole, which is a little jumpy, sort of flirty footstep. And Abo is the master. And as, of course, in a proper um, Socratic dialogue, the student asks all the right questions. But unlike an actual Socratic dialogue with Socrates where no answers are forthcoming, our bow actually does provide answers instead of just leading to the dissolution of society. So Capriol says, <clears throat> I find these pavans and bastons charming and dignified and well suited to honorable persons, particularly ladies and maidens. And Arbo replies, a cavalier may dance the pavan wearing his cloak and sword, and others, such as you, dressed in your long gowns, walking with decorum and measured gravity, and the damsels with demure mien, their eyes lowered, save to cast an occasional glance of virginal modesty at the onlookers. On solemn feast days, the pavan is employed by kings, princes and great noblemen to display themselves in their fine mantles and ceremonial robes. They are accompanied by queens and princesses and great ladies. And the long trains of their dresses loosened and sweeping behind them, sometimes borne by damsels. And it is said Pavans played by Otwa and Sackbutts, Otwa is a uh, shawm in French, that announce the grand hall and are arranged to last until the dancers have circled the hall two or three times, unless they prefer to dance it by advancing and retreating. Pavans are also used in masquerades to herald the entrance of the gods and goddesses in their triumphal chariots or emperors and kings in full majesty. So you would think that from all of that grandeur, this would be some sort of extremely complicated ornate dance, but it is not. Actually, the basic pavan, which is the one we will be learning today, first part of our class, is a very simple processional dance. And so I'm going to demonstrate that with my, my partner, my love, my handsome condottiero. And I'm sorry I'm not wearing one of my trained gowns so that you can see its elegant sweep, but I hate teaching in trains. It is the most annoying, okay. annoying thing you can ever experience in dancing. Room between the seats. So this is the pavan. I'm ignoring you.
Okay. Thank you, Amanda. So that is basically it on and on and on. So remember, remember what our good Maitre Arbeau says about the Bavan. It is a processional dance. And that is its idea. It's, it's simple and stately. And the idea is that you, the dancer, are the ornament on display. And so because it's simple and stately, you can focus your attention on, your, on displaying your garments, on literally putting yourself out there, on exhibiting yourself for the world to see and all the wealth and splendor that you contain. So let's go down to the basics of the Pavan. Now the second, the second half of our class, and actually maybe the second three-fourths of our class, is going to focus on the Galliard, um, which is what happens after the Pavan. We move on to the Galliard. The musicians swing the music into 6-8, and we then dance this very sprightly, bringing improvised dance form called the Galliard. And demonstrate that when we get to that part of our class. But for now, let's focus on this elegant processional dance. So this is a dance that is very good for people whose joints have perhaps betrayed them or uh, who do not have the endurance for the galliard. So the basic step is, of course, the single, the pas simple. And in its essence, singles are, of course, just walking steps. So the music is in four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One single step takes half of that, takes two counts. So like so. One, two, three, four. So let's have everyone just get out and let's just walk slowly around the floor at this tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And our weight is on the front halves of our feet. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now keep walking while I talk. What I would like us to do is actually raise and lower ourselves. Raise, lower. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we're really engaging the muscles of our feet, the muscles of our calves. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two, 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 three, four. So you're really using every bit of the music to lower yourself actively at the end. Up, lower, up, lower, up, lower, up, lower, up, lower, up. Lower, up lower up lower up lower 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 okay so those are the pas simple those are the pas simple and they come in the pavan they always come in pairs so you'll do a single left and a single right so let's talk about the double the pas double pas double consists of three steps and a pause and on the fourth step um for now we'll do nothing so very stately, weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. This is how that looks, four for nothing. Four, three, two, one. Step, 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 pause. So on the fourth step, we are actually going to gather because this is the 16th century and they do different things with their feet. So on the fourth step, we're actually going to gather, not close, but gather the fourth foot. So it'll look like this from this side. Left, right, left, gather. Notice my weight is still entirely on the last foot to step. My right foot is gathered. And if you need to, the point, the tips of your right toes are pointed at the ground and acting as a sort of pain or brace or crutch. But I do not close my steps because if I close my steps, then I have to think about what foot comes next. And that's not natural. You shouldn't have to think much in dancing. Dancing should sort of be intuitive eventually. <laughs> so let's try step, 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 gather. So weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready and 
step, 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 gather. So then you know what foot's going to come next because it is the foot that has no weight on it, the right foot. So let's try a double from the right foot. Ready and step, 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 gather. So let's put that together with our two singles and a double. So we're going to do two singles left and a double right, two singles right and a double left. Or excuse me, two singles left and a double left, two singles right and a double right. I apologize. Apparently my brain checked out for a moment. So we doesn't our right foot or left foot is free. So this is a set, so to say, a set of singles and double. Two singles and a double is a set. So we'll do one set on the left, one set on the right, one set on the left, one set on the right. So we're just going to do that to the music because really it's slow enough that we can manage that. Brief little intro. One, two, one, two, three, gather, step, pause, step, pause, one, two, three, gather. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, gather. Step, step. One, two, three, gather. One, two, three, four. Step, 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 gather. One, two, three, four. Step, 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 gather. Nice and controlled. One, two, three, gather. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. <clears throat> okay. Are there questions about the basic? I'm now going to add some Italian ornamentation, actually, because our bow doesn't doesn't really specify any ornamentation for these but um, I feel like they need it, a minimal amount of ornamentation anyway. Okay. There being no questions, let's talk about ornamenting these steps to make them a little more interesting. So we can add what in Italian is called a passo puntato, which I guess literally means a punctuated step. <laughs> um, and so we're going to turn that single into a passo, passo puntato. And we're gonna add a passo puntato at the end of the doppio. So, on the single, what that means is we're going to actually, instead of raising and lowering ourselves to the single, we're going to kind of invert it. We're going to, it's going to be this kind of motion. We're going to step up and down at the end. So we step up and then down. And we are bringing our feet together. But again, again, I only keep my weight on the foot that's step. I do, in fact, gather that right foot, but I do not put my weight on it because if I do put my weight on it, then I have to think, I have to consider what foot should come next, right? And that's that's just definitely not a good thing. So let's go ahead and try a passa puntati, two passi puntati, two of these punctuated steps, instead of just the normal boring old pas simple. Okay, so weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready, and one, two, one, two. Now, and actually kind of my skirts because they're kilted kind of give a bit of an impression of what would happen to the kind of skirts that are worn by ladies in this era. There'll be this kind of nice little swaying, uh, sexy movement to the skirts from that. One, two, one, two, right? So you're kind of making this like oval with your body basically. bunch of posse puntati just to try to build build up the skill and dexterity on those single steps. So weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. One, two, three, four. One, two, 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 one, two. One, two. 
two. Okay. Questions about singles with posse puntati ornamentation. Okay, let's add that pasta puntato onto the end of our dopey, our double then, our pas double. I apologize if I randomly lapse into Italian or some other random language. Okay, right is on our right foot. So this is how this will look. One, two, three, four. And again, most of the brunt of this step is being taken by my left foot, the last foot to have stepped. I can use my right foot to assist, but I want to make sure that my left foot bears the entirety of the weight by the end of the step because I don't want to have to think about which foot comes next. That's not my, I don't like thinking while dancing. Too much trouble. So let's try Dopey now adding that puntato at the end of each of the doubles. Weight is in our right foot, left foot is free. Four, three, two, one. One, two, punta, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, up, down, 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 one, two, Three 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 up, down. Questions about Punkati at the end of your singles or doubles? I see a question coming. I feel it. Yeah. Um, for that, it's it's step, step, like it's a step one, two, three, and then the fourth is the up down, or is it that you are taking a last step at the fourth and then it just going down? So that's a good question about the timing. So step, 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 and the up down takes the time of the fourth count. That's a good question. Yes. So the up down really takes the time of the fourth count. Step, step, step. So that, that basically, it assumes the place of what would normally be a pause. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you, Brianna. Are there any other questions of equal caliber? I guess I'll accept questions of lesser caliber as well, but I mean, really, come on. <laughs> okay, then let's, so this is a couple's dance. If you have a partner, then please do go and invite someone to dance. And it is described how this should be done. You should approach a person and you should make a reverenza to them. One, two, three, four. And then they should respond with a reverenza. And you know, you should probably also ask them something like, you know, good sir, good madam, good cat. May I have this dance? Depending on your level of desperation for a partner. And so, good sir, may I have this dance? And then he would respond with a reverence. And he would say something like, it would be my deepest honor. You are the goddess of my sky some ideas. And then together, you will go onto the floor. And in the 16th century, gentlemen are on the left, ladies are on the right, at least to start any given dance. That may change throughout the dance. But gentlemen on the left, ladies are on the right. If it's two ladies, then whoever is on the left is the leader, if there's any kind of uh, he goes, she goes sort of action happening. In the Pavan, this is not the case. The Pavan, everyone's doing exactly the same thing together at the same time. So please go and invite someone to dance. If it's a ghost, please be very genteel to them. They are extra delicate in their dead state. And then let us go ahead and dance the pavan. Two singles and a double. That repeated, adding that puntato in. Brief intro. I 
cat is snoring. Double, two, three, four. Single, single, double. From the top. If you have a partner, this would be a great dance for some nice conversation. It's simple enough, you could probably lapse into discussing Plato's allegory of the cave, maybe. <laughs> be a really good exercise also or drill also for your calf muscles you really want to make sure you're controlling the up and the down you're not just letting yourself fall to the earth like a lump of bricks you're controlling that down oh, well this is three minutes long this was recorded with the idea that you would have plenty of music if you needed for your procession and you didn't have live musicians. Are there questions about the pavon? Okay, then we're going to actually migrate on to its, its, its younger sister, the Galliard. So I'm going to introduce you to some things that Arbo has to say about the Galliard. <clears throat> He's, I don't know why the hell. It just got dark and then light again. Welcome to my weird technical world. So this is what Arbo uh, says about, or rather, this is what asks. He says, you told me that after the bastons and its retour, it stands the Tour d'Ion, and that the Tour d'Ion was a kind of galliard, which you postponed explaining to me until you came to the subject of the galliard. And Arbo replies, in the towns nowadays, the galliard is danced regardless of the rules. And the dancers are satisfied to perform the cinq pas and a few passages without any orderly arrangement to them, so long as they keep the rhythm, with the result that many of their best passages go unnoticed and are lost. In earlier days, when everything was better, people danced with much more discernment. When the dancer had chosen a damsel and led her to the end of the hall, after making the reverence, they circled the room once or twice together, simply walking, and then the dancer released the damsel, and she went away dancing to the other end of the hall. And once there, continued to dance upon the same spot. In the meanwhile, the dancer, having followed her, presented himself before her to perform a few passages, turning at will now to the left and now to the right. This done, the damsel then danced her way to the opposite end of the hall. And her partner dancing all the while pursued her thither in order to execute more passages before her. And thus, continuing these goings and comings, the dancer kept introducing new passages and displaying his skill until the musicians stopped playing. Then, taking the damsel by the hand and thanking her, he performed the reverence and returned her to her place from whence he had led her forth to death. Oh, there's so much in this passage, so much judgment. It's delightful, but also some details about the form of the galliard. He goes on to describe its steps later. So in its essence, the galliard is a solo dance. It is a couple displaying their virtuosity. Virtuosity. That's how you say it in English. Their virtuosity. And as you see, the gentleman asks the lady to dance. He asks, takes her onto the floor. They just gently stroll around with just single steps until they catch some point in the music, at which point they start dancing, the galliard itself. The lady dances teasingly to one end of the hall. He follows her. She performs some really complex, solo, excellent work. Then he displays his own work. 
Then she goes to the other end of the hall and makes him follow her, repeat, and then they finish. He performs a reverence and he returns her to her spot. He does not just dump her in the middle of the floor and say, nice dance, see you later, right? So some ballroom etiquette. If you invite someone to dance, I don't care if you were the leader or the follower, please return them to their spot. And interestingly, this is the same practice in the 15th century in the ballrooms of Italy. It, it's actually explained that you return the, your partner to the place from which you found her. So that did not change in 150 years, apparently. But that he had to say it in this little diatribe about how decadent dances become tells me that people had stopped doing that. <laughs> and that manners had just been cast aside for frivolity and fun. So oh, I'm going to put on the music now and I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of the galliard. And then we're going to go through the basics. The galliard can be extremely ornate and extremely exhausting. And obviously we're not going to get through ornate today. We're going to get through the basics and maybe a couple of alternate decorative bits. But this is what a galliard looks like. Cool. I can keep going. But those were a couple of different variations from the Galliard and some combinations and whatnot. So some of you, especially my musicians out there, have also played or heard of the Tordillon. And Capriol mentioned the Tordillon briefly. The Tordillon, according to Arbo, is just a gentle version of the Galliard. He says that in the Galliard, you kick large, and then the tordillon, you keep your feet close to the floor. And so he literally says, he actually says this, the tordillon is for the older and more infirm dancers. He's a very judgmental man for being someone who's like in his 80s at this point. <laughs> um, yeah. So in essence, by learning the galliard, you are learning the tordillon. For the tordillon, we just keep it lower to the floor. So we're actually sort of going to start with the Tordillon style steps and build up to the insanity of the Galliard style steps. So first off, let's talk about the rhythm of the Galliard. So that that Galliard that we just that you just heard is actually the Galliardization, the great word that I just invented, of the Pavan music. So that was the Pavan Viennoise. And so this is that music rearranged into six, into six, eight. All right. Same melody, just different number of notes per bar. So the rhythm is, so let's start by clapping the rhythm together. This is your rhythm. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, and five. So that is the rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And there is a charming um, manuscript from the second half of the 16th century from England that has a bunch of someone's cheat notes on dancing for the evening so that he could have like a quick reference. And for the Galliard, his only cheat note is literally he wrote one, two, three, four, and five. That was his cheat note for the Galliard. One, two, three, four, and five. And that's that's what I want you to keep in your head for the rhythm. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Or the tordillon, same thing. 
So <clears throat> in terms of what our feet are doing, let's try stomping lightly on the front halves of our feet. Okay. And so don't stomp heavily. We're just kind of stepping in place maybe is better. So we're just going to step and I'll make it go slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna step on all of the clapping. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 We're just staying in place, not going anywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You'll notice I'm on the front halves of my feet. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Are there questions thus far about the rhythm or the little cute steps we were just doing? Okay. There seem to be no questions, and Ava just vanished into her rainbow, which is so fun. Um, <laughs> so we're now. We're now going to step four times. One, two, three, four. Hold one of those counts and then step on six. So the pattern is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I don't do that from behind so you can actually see what my feet are doing from there. So let's put our weight on our right foot and we'll do this slowly or slower than that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Weight is in our right foot, left foot is free. Ready, and left, right, left, right, left. One, the rhythm, rhythmically, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So right foot should now be free. Let's try that same thing with the right foot. Ready, and one, two, three, four, and five. Weight should be on the right foot again. So that's the drill. We're gonna just drill that at that tempo. Okay, keep your, keep your little steps small and in place. We're not going anywhere yet. So weight is on our right foot, left foot is free, uh, six for nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three. Four, five, six. One, two, three, 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 four, five, six. Step, 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 and step, 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 step. And step, 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 and step. Okay, questions about the little, little stepping rhythm, rhythm exercise. I see discussion, but that's no, no questions. Good. Okay. If you, if you do have questions, please do feel free to ask them. Okay. So that's the basic rhythm. Now let's go ahead instead of stepping under ourselves, let's turn those into little kicks, little kicks. So, and, and no springing yet, no bouncing yet. We're, we're at the tourbillon stage, the, the version for the old and the infirm. <laughs> oh, I just love 16th century language. It's so fun. So weight is in our right foot, our left foot is free. So from the side, this is how this would look. Um, so actually, yeah. So Instead of stepping onto our left foot, we're actually going to, we are going to step onto our left foot and we're going to kick with our right foot like that at the same time. So let's try it. Let's, let's practice that first, that, that shifting exercise. So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. And so it's going to be a step kick and that's simultaneous step kick. From the side, that looks like this step kick. That reflection. Closer. So put our weight on our right foot. Let's try step kick again. Ready and step kick. And they're nearly simultaneous. Obviously, the step to the left on the left foot comes a little bit ahead of the kicking with the right, but they're as simultaneous as they can be. So now that your 
right foot has no weight on it. For the right foot, kick with the left foot, step kick. From the back, that looks like this, step, step. So let's just try, let's just do that. Back and forth, step, kick, 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 step, kick. And I want to keep it as little as possible. And don't worry about kick, uh, bouncing, no springing yet. We're just step kicking. Step, 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 kick, step, kick, step, kick, step, kick, step, kick. And you'll notice, maybe some of you noticed, that um, I'm not pointing my toe. This is not a 16th century thing. This is a post Louis XIV thing, right? So I'm actually flexing my foot at the ankle. Okay. So the rhythm is going to be, and I, I can't say step kick. So I'm just going to say kick. And by kick, the implication is that there's a step kick happening because there's just not enough time for me to say step kick, step kick, step kick. So <clears throat> from the side, it looks like this. Step, kick, 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 kick. So let's just do four of those, starting with the step kick. So weight is in our left foot, our right foot is free. Slowly, uh, six for nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Step, kick, kick, kick. Okay. Okay, now our right foot is free. Let's try. Four of those little kicks from here. Ready and kick, 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 kick. And again, no bouncing yet, just, just gentle little steps and kicks. Okay, let's do that over and over for now. Don't we'll worry about what comes. There's a there's a change of weight that happens in the middle there. We'll get there in a moment. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three. Four, five, six. Okay, you're probably thinking, well, we started with the same foot every time. Yes, you did, and we're going to fix that in a moment. But before we do, are there any questions about these little step kicks? Yeah, I, I have my own Capriol in my head. I don't need another human. I, I grew up as a single child. Some of you heard my lamentation earlier in one of the earlier classes. So I have a great imagination, and I can have whole conversations with just myself. Okay, so there are no questions about our four little kicks. Let's talk about the capriole and not the annoying brat who's in our bow, but the actual capriole or cadenza, a cadence actually. So during that five, six, during which we've been holding thus far, you're not actually going to hold, you're going to do something. So this is how it looks in toto, in toto. So from the back, one, two, three, four, and then I switch weight onto my fifth foot with final little step kick. So in total, it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or one, two, three, four, and five. In, in terms of how the music feels and how it felt to people in the 16th century too. Not quite amusingly. So it's just a final weight shift. And, and the tordillon tempo, the tordillon uh, dialing, it's not a jump, it's a switch. You don't want to jump because you're old and infirm, right? That's why you're doing the tordillon. So let's try to keep it one, two, three, four, and five. Nice and gentle, okay? Let's go ahead and try that together. So weight is on our left foot. We'll start with our weight on our left foot. Ready, and. One, two, three, four, and five. 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 One, two, three, four, 
and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, how is that going? Do I need to do it more? Do we need to do it more slowly for anyone? Okay, a little more slowly, a little more slowly. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's start at that piece. So weight is on our left foot to start. Right foot is free ready. Um, one, two, three, four, and five. 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 One, two, three, four. And five, one, two, three, four, 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 and five, one, two, three, four. And five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. <clears throat> How was that going with our little low, with the little kicks? They're actually called pie en l'air, literally means foot in the air. And uh, in for the kicks of the galliard, they're called greve. All right. And Arbo explains that pie en l'air literally just means putting your foot in the air delicately. And then the greve is where we start adding bouncing. Okay, then let us go ahead and try the kind of the full out galliard kick. So we'll start, we'll start with just the kicking exercise. Don't worry about the shifting of weight for now. We're just going to practice greve, the greve sort of in time to the music. So the four kicks and hold, four kicks and hold. And for this, there is bouncing from foot to foot or leaping sort of from foot to foot. You're not, not huge, well, I guess it could be if you really want to. But from, from the back, this is how this would look on me. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. One from the side. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. So you'll see there's a lot more bouncing and springing happening. So let's try that slowly. Let's try that slowly. Uh, just put your weight on your right foot, actually. Left foot is free. So <clears throat> uh, six for nothing. Slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, holding. And one, two, three, four, holding. One, two, three, four, and hold. 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 Okay, something I want to mention here before we get too much further on these grab, these kicks. Um, please be on the front tops of your feet. And as you're springing from foot to foot, use the front half of your feet to catch yourselves, to catch yourselves, right? We're not just slamming our feet onto the earth. We're using the feet God gave us for the thing for which they were intended, which was actually to help control our locomotion, right? So you're using your toes, and the muscles in your arches to actually catch each of those leaps. So that we're doing what's called soft landing instead of hard landing. This will preserve the joints in your toes and your ankles and your knees and your hips for as long as they can, given that you're doing a damned galliard, right? It's just, it's a high impact dance. So I really want you to try to focus on soft landings. Soft landings. Okay, were there questions? about the greve. Okay, let's do the greve again. And this time I want you to focus on soft landings. Soft landings for every, every little leap kick. Okay, so weight is on our right foot to start, our left foot is free. Ready, and one, two, three, four, and five. 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 One, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, 
and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's do that. Now leading, <laughs> you all hate me, I know. Galliards, I love galliards. I can actually galliard. I hit it forever zone and I can just keep going until the music stops for like 20, 30 minutes. Then when the music stops, it feels like someone's cut my strings. Okay, so put our weight on our left foot so that our right foot is free. Okay. We're gonna start by leaping onto our right foot. Ready, and one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four. 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 And five, one, two, soft landings. One, two, three, four. And five, one, two, three, four. A couple more sets, soft landings. One, two, three, four. Okay. So oh, I'm going to give you a moment to fetch a drink or take your breath. And I'm going to, while you do that, I'm going to actually give you another little interesting insight into the dance culture of this era. And at least as observed through the eyes of this curmudgeonly uh, priest. So, <laughs> so um, what real comments, interestingly. So this is a cultural note within their culture. The Poles, people from Poland, so I have heard said, invariably walk on their toes. And Arbe says, indeed, their heels are raised and supported by the cork and iron placed in their shoes, which prevents them from running as easily as we do. That is why the Poles give the appearance of being two or three fingers taller than they are. If you watch animals closely, you will find that with few exceptions, they move on their toes. So the interesting, the interesting note there, that's a fashion note, that the French were not wearing heeled shoes at this point, but that the Pol people in Poland, in the kingdom of Poland, it was a kingdom at that point, had actually started wearing shoes made with heels that were made of cork and iron. So I just, I thought that was a really interesting interesting thing to toss in there. Oh, this is funny too. Capriol says, um, I shall take care of this advice and also the reason for which you gave it to me above. Because in dancing the Tordillon, one always holds the damsel by the hand and he who dances it boisterously causes needless discomfort and jolting to the said damsel. So that's an interesting note that um, you should not bounce too much higher than your partner is. Okay, so now let us go ahead and add that and leap to switch weight between galliards, right? So I'll demonstrate from the side. If uh, weight is on my right foot and my left foot is free to start, I go kick, 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 jump land. And think of it as jump land. Like that's in, in my head, that's the narration that's happening with the music. So I jump up off of that one foot and land on the other foot. Whatever is the last foot off the ground. So let's put our weight on our right foot. And I just want us to do just jump land. So the idea is that we're leaping up and over onto our left foot and freeing up our right foot. And again, soft landings, please. So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. And even our left foot is even kind of in the air like we've just done a galliard kick, a crab. Ready and jump land, nice and soft. Okay, let's try that onto the right foot and jump land. And jump land, what I can't say also is that the other foot then kicks out. Right. So whatever foot is being freed, liberated, kicks out as the other foot receives the, the landing, hopefully sticks the landing also. So let's add a jump land off onto the end of one series of four grev, four kicks. So weight is in our right foot, our left foot is free. We'll do this slowly. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five is actually a hold and it's six where everything happens there. So there's a really hard pause. It's hard. It's, it's noticeable. Watch. One, two, three, four, and five. It's a complete syncopation there at the back. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a series of the crève with the jump land, alternating left and right slowly. Six for nothing. One, two, three, four, and five. 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 One, two, three, four. And five, one, two, three, four, 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 and five, one, two, three, nice soft landings, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four. And five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so I'm going to put on the Viennoise Galliard and I'm going to let you loose, practice a little bit, and then I'm going to give you a couple of additional pieces. Or actually, for those who are ready for something a little more, who are ready for a little more, um, you can actually add pied croisé instead of just kicking forward with your glove. You can pied croisé it. All right, so that would look like this: one, two, three, four. One, two. Right, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four. So if you're ready for a little something more, you can go ahead and do these pied croisé. Right, it really creates this interesting back and forth. You can alternate pie croisé in one round of galliard, and then the regular club in the other mix and match as you like. That's only though for my dancers who are a little more advanced and would like something else. Okay, otherwise, here we go. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, that was right. I apologize. Right. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, and five. You can also alternate with the little accordion kick. One, two. So where there's no bouncing. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four. One, two, five. One, two, three, four. 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 You made it all the way through. No, no, bad song. You made it all the way through. You just did an hour, an hour, <laughs> a minute and a half of Galliard. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, questions now that you've had a chance to swim through it once. Okay. So yes, I see a lot of gasping and there are techniques that happening. So. One of the techniques is obviously just to build up your endurance until you can do it fine. But that failing, and maybe in a more realistic world, 
Uh, as Arbo mentioned, that at the beginning of the Galliard, the damsel and the gentleman just walk around with single steps, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So, you know, just doing singles every three counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, four, five, six. Okay, so, so given that, given that, if you get tired in the middle of your Galliard, that's no problem. Then just go from this to one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can intersperse, you know, four little walking steps or eight little walking steps. I would do them in multiples of four because that's how the music is phrased, right? It's in four bars of four. So at any point, you can just drop out of this and just walk elegantly, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's, that's one option for getting around. But also don't forget the tordillon level. So one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five. Just keep everything really small. Don't bounce. Right. You can always intersperse little gentle tordillon steps into the bounce of the galliard. Okay, are there questions about any of that? Okay, then what we're now going to do is we're going to cap off. We're going to do the whole pavan. So, um, and then the music is just going to shift into the galliard. Okay, so pavan and then galliard. So if we recall, our pavan was two singles and a double, that again. And Kumpati at the end to ornament. Single, single, double, two, three. Single, single, double, two, three. Single, single, double, two, three. Single, single. single. And pretend that you have someone on your hand. So decide whether you're the leader or the follower. Nice and controlled puntati, controlling both the up and the down. I actually once attended a ball, or no, I didn't attend, I led the ball. I guess I attended it also, but I was leading the ball. And we actually had torchbearers, and we were actually dancing out in the field at night. We had the king and the queen, and they were actually dancing this between four torchbearers, followed by their, their court. Quite impressive. They were real torches. They were big, huge, thick branches wrapped in black soaked linen. Quite bright. And no, we didn't set the field on fire, if you were wondering. I mean, this is the kind of conversation you could be enjoying with your partner. Because that's the beauty of simple dances like this. But you can just talk. not actually explicitly stated anywhere that I have found, but I have a feeling that marriages were sometimes arranged in these dances between, not between the, the marriageable partners, but between uh, mothers and fathers of respective bridal teams. So, Galliard. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Don't forget to do for the on if it's getting too bouncy. Very nice. Okay, so that has been today's exploration of yet another aspect of 16th century dance. I would like to um, finish off with just a quick, amusing little passage, and then I'll take any questions while you catch your breath, and maybe while I catch my breath. So this is more judgment from Metka Abo. <laughs> He says, nowadays, dancers lack these courteous considerations in their voltas and other similarly wanton and wayward dances that have been brought into usage. In dancing them, the damsels are made to bounce about in such a fashion that more often than not, they show their bare knees unless they keep one hand on their skirts to prevent it. And Capriol says, here of dancing that you just not honorable to me, unless one is dancing with some strapping hussy from the servants' hall. <laughs> I just, oh my God, I love our bow. <laughs> strapping hussy from the servants' hall. Uh, yeah, one of one of my students, Decimus, actually asked about the Volta. And the Volta, you've probably seen it attempted or some version of it in certain movies like Shakespeare in Love, where the gentleman is dancing with the lady and he actually picks her up and twirls her around in the middle of the galliard. Um, the Volta can only be taught to people who are wearing the appropriate garments from the 16th century. The ladies have to have an appropriately stiff and fitted bodice, preferably with a bust. Um, because the men have to grab that busk to actually heave them. And if they don't have a busk, there's nothing to grab. And if their bodice doesn't fit properly, the bodice comes off and the lady falls out. I've seen it happen. Literally. Yeah. So <laughs> that's fun on a dance floor. Me with that delightfully comedic image of dancing with strapping huzzies from the servants' hall. <laughs> strapping, mind you, they should be strapping, not just any delicate little hussy. She better have some meat on her. <laughs> Are there any questions about anything we've covered today? Can you speak a little more about um, how you uh, ornament the galliard? Because when you do it, is it just the pia croise? Is that all you're doing? Or there... oh, no, 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 no. There's 20 or 30 other things you can do to the galliard. Okay. There, there's there's a whole lot, but you shouldn't you shouldn't move on to any of them <laughs> until you are you fully mastered either the pie on there or the greve, okay. the the regular greve, because otherwise you're just going to start tying your feet up and you'll probably fall at some point. But yeah, no, there's there's I mean he's got ten or fifteen pages on different things you can do to the galliard, basic. So this was really just a surface uh, exploration, and there's there's also a dance game from the 16th century. Um, kick the tassel, where they would actually hang a tassel on the end of a rope over the rafters. And there's a specific galliard step that involves whirling while doing it. And they actually have to, let me see if I can do it. And they actually have to whirl around on that and kick it with their back of the heel. 
and they raise it's like reverse limbo they rever they raise the tassel higher and higher until you know no the last person who can actually kicks it wins the game oh, <laughs> and reveals a lot of leg and reveals a lot of leg but only men no women oh uh, okay no women so it wouldn't matter it's just it's just the women it's just the men this is, this is this is this is the way men could show the ladies that they were worthy dance partners basically so yeah there's a lot of different things that can be done to the galliard like um you know i've i've taken back in the mists of my early days i took you know whole weekend long workshops on just the galliard <laughs> It's all making me think of the mating dances of birds. Yeah, right. The displays. Yeah, it's just exactly the same. So, yeah, basically, the, exactly. The females, the female humans display somewhat, and the female birds generally don't. Yeah, no. That's we watched. We, we actually watched our neighborhood roadrunner couple. Um, the the male was courting the female, and he was doing some really great moves. I mean, shaking his tail, shaking his head, his body. He had a lizard for her, and she just stood there impassively looking kind of the other way and eventually he got up to her did his little dance thing presented her with the lizard and she took it and ran off oh. <laughs> yeah i we got it on video i'm gonna i'm gonna put it together and do like a david Attenborough style narration <laughs> over top of it um <laughs> yeah so yeah, you're right. It's a lot like birds, except in this case, the women do sometimes do something. They do a lot more than that female roadrunner did anyway. So that was a good question. Yes, there's tons of other stuff, lots of stuff. There's connector steps and string steps. And then there's the Italian galliards versus the French galliards. Yeah. And uh, what was the name of the book again that you're reading from? Uh, or orthography. <laughs> um, fortunately, yeah. Orchis. So, orchestography, okay. like orchestra, orchestography. Um, and it, it is available on Amazon. It's available on eight books. It's available. I'd recommend going to anywhere else but Amazon first because like, you can probably get a good used copy of it at Thrift Books or eight books or whatever. Amazon doesn't deserve my money. Jeff Bezos is a rich oligarchical jerk who doesn't deserve what he has. That's it. Um, <laughs> so are there any questions? Other questions, good, bad, or indifferent? Comments? Oh, I should check the chat just in case. It was just really fun. That was my only comment. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, next week, we are exploring the bastons of the 16th century, the bastons communes. So uh, that will be something slower <laughs> and less energetic. <laughs> Um, uh, so I, I mean, I'm not, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to, I don't think I should, I'm not going to bother sending you notes for this class because two singles and a double and one, two, three, four, and five is pretty much the note. <laughs> so write it down. Okay. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, then I thank you all sincerely for joining me on this Sunday morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is in your respective part of the globe. And I will see most of you next week. That was fun. Till next Thank week. So Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.